Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Chuck. How are you today? I'm good. I'm off work today. Well, pseudo off work. So. Well, you know what? The whole world's stopping right now. The, the world stops for a few events. All right. And that is a solar eclipse. That is a new Taylor Swift album. <laughs> that is the week between Christmas and New Year's. And last but not least, an old world FAQ release. Out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere. We kind of expected this. That's That was the rumors going around. And we needed a little bit. Mm hmm. Yeah, but I'm excited. Uh, I am too. Uh, friend John Barrymore, who hopefully I'll, we'll do another show with him here soon on the channel, but uh, a little fireside chat ping me as I'm slowly waking up and getting moving today. And I was like, okay, well, I don't have any meetings for an hour, so I'll just take an early lunch, and we're going to check out this whole shebang. I've not read it a bit. You've said you've, you've skimmed a minute or two of it. Yep, yep. Gotcha. All right. Well, tell you what, let me just bring up the article first here. And then we will get it going. All right. So Old World Almanac. Oh, I love seeing that word. All right. Designer notes in the FAQ errata. So Old World's been out for two months. Safe to say it's been a great success. Now that people have a chance to get to grips with quite complex set of rules. The team has released their first set of community-driven community FAQs. Okay. So they are taking... Uh, you know, FAQ questions and keeping an eye out what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. So the FAQs are for the core rules, forces of fantasy, and rabbiting hordes. So that's leaving out the arcane journals. And let's see. Top of the, some corrections to the errors and legacy PDFs, all of which you can download below. Oh, okay. So there's I, I missed those, actually, whenever <laughs> I was getting this all set up. Yeah, I like how they're like, uh, they're like, hey, we made some corrections. Uh, this is not us supporting the legacy <laughs> Not at Just all. No, so you know. no, 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 no. Not supporting at all. I uh, actually. Hate to do that. I'm curious. I, I, we'll do it live at the end if I can. If the computer can handle it. But the one FAQ question I've been dying to know is on dark elves. Which elves have two hand weapons, and it screws up their other rules. So I'm assuming that's been corrected, so they can actually be useful in a blend like they should. But anyway, moving on. Past weekend herald the release of the third arcane journal, which mines on its way right now. I'm excited. Finally got the shipping notice yesterday. Mm. Giving Orc and Goblin Tribes two exciting new armies, two special characters, special units, loads more brand brand new content. Expands upon the rules of Ravening Hordes, allows Orc and Goblin players to enjoy a similar amount of content to Kings of Tony and Camry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along a full army list, of nine core factions, legacy rules for seven more. A lot of content released in a short amount of time. Sure was. Uh, I don't think we were expecting to be going this quick. <laughs> if I'm honest. You, Neil? No. No, it's it's been it's been pretty fast, so I'm excited. I guess. All right, as we newly as with any new release game, we have plenty of questions from players. We'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's taken the time to get in touch. Enjoy the FAQ and FAQ uh, the inbox, which I know I put that out there before, but I'll try and get it for the podcast this week to remind people where they can go if there's more continued questions. Right, see, armed with your questions, we've updated the initial old world FAQ document which include a combination of questions and designers and playtesters anticipated, blah, 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 blah. And added two more. Okay, so Ravening Hordes. Okay, and commentary. This is just kind of fluff fluff text. But hey, we, we, we're fixing it. We're, we're correcting a few things that we're questioning. Go check it out. Um, update legacy army list. Strictly in order with some errors. Yep. Am I missing anything here, Neil? This is, just, is this just all fluff text? It's pretty much. Okay. Yeah. You know. The meat, the meat's in in the in the facts. <laughs> there we go. Hey, that's nothing, nothing wrong with that. So let's just close out that right now and get to the hey, they, we're we're back. All right, let's start with core rules. Bring up this PDF here. Boom, version one point one. That's right, because we already had one point zero, as they said. All right, and as usual, new is magenta, and there's a lot of magenta on this page. <laughs> yeah. All right, Neil, just chime in here at any time. Hmm. Let's have some more of my delicious morning coffee. <laughs> All right, combat result bonus. It, whilst in... Whilst. Whilst. That's... Uh, bleh. Whilst. <laughs> whilst in a combat order, a close order formation with the unit strength of five or more may claim a bonus of plus one combat result. Okay. So this is just a change up to unit strength of five or more. Yeah. So 
Yeah, that's yeah, good that, change. Easy, simple. That's what everything's minimal unit size seems to be, so easy. All right, heavy casualties. If during any single phase, other than the combat phase, unit loses more than 25% of its models, contained in the start of the phase, must take a panic test. Yep, yeah. and I, I think we all kind of caught that early on, but we all kind of just knew. Like, well, yeah. we're in combat, so I don't pick take panic. This is just clarifying that, so that's that's good, especially for newer players getting in that might have that question. Yep. Chariot runners. I haven't used these yet. Friendly uh, models whose troop type is chariot can draw a line of sight over or through models with this special rule and can move through friendly units if they are in skirmish formation and if the majority of models have this special rule. I don't, sure. have the, I don't have the book with me right now, but I think that's just specifying chariot. Like a chariot unit is the only one who can do that. Yeah. Not any, not any others, so. I, I believe you're right. Yeah, because it was kind of loosely worded to beforehand uh oh everything okay that's my cat knocking something over <laughs> I hope it wasn't uh, something that broke it didn't sound like a model so it's fine it's just a face or something yeah. alright uh, invasive once per turn when a unit with the majority of this model has the special rules declared to target during the enemy shooting phase the unit may choose to fall back in good order fleeing directly away from the enemy unit shooting at it okay that's fine I think um uh, I'm not sure what I, I don't know if anything I don't know what has evasive, but nothing in the high elf army has it, so I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. Uh, I haven't either. I don't really see what the what. I guess well, it's, if it's you're like right on the edge of the range, should be good. But like, when are you ever on the edge of a thirty inch range? I don't know. So uh, I mean, it depends. There's a hill in the back, so it it that it's useful and like I, it does cl clearly say fall back in good order, so like not like a flee. So but I'd rather move back. Away. So it's not like you can choose where you're going to kind of like hide behind yeah. something. Yeah. I don't know. I okay. I mean, sure. No, anyway, it just it's a rules clarification. Doesn't like it doesn't affect anything I've done in my stuff. So um, that's fine. Yeah. All right, fire and flee. Oh, I wish I wish Larry and Reavers had this. They did them dirty, not giving them this. All right, if the majority of Muslims unit armed with missile weapons, special rule they may declare that it will fire and flee as a charge reaction. Okay, I don't think it was ever. Huh. I wonder what the change there. Uh, maybe the question um, was if you have like characters in there, or if you have like multiple characters and most of the units shot off around you, and they don't have fire and flee, can you still fire and flee? Oh, because it's no longer the majority of the models. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that one up. That's, that's interesting. Fire and flee. Because I have my book right next to me. We're not going to do this too much, but this one intrigues me. So there's some fire and flee in the group. Um... Well, you're looking that up. I'm just going to read the next one, a random movement, because it's, yep. it's very self-explanatory. Yep. You're right, I'm you're right. Sure you, 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 you just nailed Fire and Fleet. Got it. All right, random movement. Go ahead. This is important to you. Uh, change the third sentence of the first paragraph of the rule to, when a model with this special rule moves, roll the dice to determine its maximum movement. I thought that was pretty obvious, but mm -hmm. okay. Gotcha. You want to, yeah, you want to read the second half? Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. go for it. Um, uh, page 177, reserve move. Change the first sentence of the rule to, unless it charged, marched, or fled during the movement phase, a unit with the majority of the models, uh, in which the majority of the models have this special rule, may make a reserve move at the end of the shooting phase, after all shooting has been resolved. So, I guess you have to, I don't know, I'm guessing the, the, the change there is the, after all shooting has been resolved. Yeah, it might be specifically, the top, maybe some people were confused and trying to do magic in that after they did this. Potentially, because uh, that that could, maybe that could be it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's 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 pretty good yeah. change. Clarify. Swift clarify. Ride. Change the rule to a unit which consists entirely of models with this special rule increases as its maximum possible charge range by three inches, and when it makes a charge, flee or pursuit roll may apply plus d6 modifier to the result. Ooh, entirely. So, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean that. Like I said, it's weird because there's so much stuff on this that's like I've not encountered, or I'm yeah. a, being an elf player. Like I just don't care. But now I like I need to make sure. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. does my character have swift stride on that? Because it doesn't. Right. I'm in trouble. Seems very character based. Uh, like a lot of these seem like how do characters kind of interact? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the previous one of this is just a unit. So if you have a hero in there, he better have swift stride. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Berserker Blade. Add the following note to the weapon profile. Notes the wielder of the Berserker Blade is frenzied. Ooh, that... That's change. Frenzy makes that tough, because you put... Uh-oh, that's gonna... <laughs> you got the Berserker Blade on some of your list? I, I've looked at it. Um, yeah, because it, before it was just... Uh... Oh, it, it was Frenzy Magical Attacks, Combat Strength plus one. Yeah. But Frenzied. Okay, so I was just clarifying that. And then we got uh, Bedazzling Helm. Add the following to the start of the rule. Models who, whose troop type is infantry or cavalry only. Now, I love rules like this when it comes to any type of magic items. Mm -hmm. Like I love them pulling a lever that says you can use this, but it can only be on this. Right. I think you can do so much more fiddling with the rules when you start to um i don't know if you remember aos but a, uh, um, i do remember the, that game i do remember that game yeah, yes oh, sorry the, the <laughs> item in aos that is uh turns an entire unit um ethereal what was that was the name of that something oh cloak. yeah 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 ethereal cloak or something like mm -hmm. that so everybody took it and put it on a zombie dragon now i don't know yep. why this guy's cloak <laughs> makes the entire the dragon entire unit. Ethereal. And I used to always scream, like, this should just be foot heroes only, foot heroes only. And it's a fine item. It's not overpowered. It's just something you, you might yeah. want to take. So this kind of thing, I really love. So Yeah, especially, uh, too, because they could have taken the incorrect approach and changed it from 60 points to, like, 80 points. And it's just like, well, no, no one's going no to take it on things that it could be useful for. Because, by the way, the Bedazzling Helm, just for everyone's reference, um, may be worn with other armor, so you can take full plate and this. Essentially, you can get a maximum armor of two plus because it gives you plus one armor any enemy model that directs its attacks against the wearer during combat suffers a minus one to hit to their rolls so yeah you're putting this on dragons yeah. all, almost all the time you know, or like yeah. or griffins or whatever you got and mm -hmm. it's stupid so i i like this because we're not even through the first page um not that there's a ton you know change these are yeah. big changes but like okay yeah they're pulling those levers like you said let's not yeah. put this on dragons let's calm that down a little bit right but let's keep it because it's a good item because honestly, you know, one of my big gripes about old Eighth Edition was how easy it was to kill monsters or heroes on monsters. It was it was just too easy. There was there was no reason to take them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, they've done a good job in this game of saying, hey, you can actually use these big monsters that are cool looking that you actually want to play with. But I think they've you've got to be very careful with, with not <laughs> like turning it into hero hammer where now this monster is just unkillable. And I think we have a little bit of that going on. And this is a change. These yeah. little changes like this are something that kind of pull them back just enough without making it to the point where, Oh, well, you know, um, yeah, I can't take this anymore. It's stupid. You know? yeah, so, I'll, I'll still take a dragon if I want to. Yeah. That's great. But like, okay, I, I can't use this. Okay. That's fine. A three up dragon. It's like the other thing too. I, I don't know if we'll get to it if it's in here, but, um, the three save thing seems to be more of the issue <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. That, that's a great change of Dazzling Helm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yep. All right. Um, uh, the, uh, yeah, last page, one. Yeah, so the last one. Page one of the uh, quick, quick reference sheet, Dispelling a Spell. Replace the first bullet point as follows. If the result exceeds the casting role, the spell is dispelled. Yeah, there's, there's a few. I think there might be more. Uh, maybe it was missed or whatever. But yeah, there's a few like weird things on, on it. It was just misprint. It wasn't a thing but like if you're using that and then the rule says different you're like wait a second i'm confused um easy enough all right you want to take the uh yeah. next side the uh, question and answer here yeah we're gonna read the faqs uh, just the new ones as usual so general principles if i mark the position of a unit then proceed to move it before putting it back where it was and moving it again does it count as a take back yes absolutely <laughs> 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 i love this team so much uh, yes it's a take back yeah <laughs> that's i'm sorry i wasn't expecting that but like i should have because like that's all throughout this document on one point i was so sorry that made me laugh yeah all right you want to just alternate on this one go back, go back and forth sure, sure. okay can a unit arrayed in close order or open order formation be one model wide answer yes uh, no, no, we're just doing the uh, pink. Oh, just doing the magenta. Just doing the magenta. Okay. Yeah, otherwise we'll be here all day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How does a close order unit of just one model act if it's still a close order formation, or does it act like a skirmisher? 
Answer, a close order unit always acts as such, even if it only contains a single model. Yep, because you have a keyword. That's how keywords work. Mm -hmm. All right, does a unit count as, as being obscured when some other models within it are behind others? No, a unit cannot be obscured from the enemy by itself. Who's doing Like, oh, you know what? I know who's doing this. Yeah, what is this? I, 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 I bet. I don't know if there's like a sniper type rule in here or something, but I bet it's people with like the damsel in the lance formation because she can purposely hide in the back and still not count as... She she can hide in the unit and not be seen, essentially, because models uh, are blocking her. I, I, I see you, Bretonian players. Calm down. <laughs> and guess what? You put her there, she's probably in the center. She's getting hit. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, if a wizard has a magic item or special rule that allows them to re-roll a failed casting roll, can they re-roll a natural double one and avoid a miscast? No. no. The roll of a natural double one isn't merely a failed casting roll. It is a miscast as described on page 109. Very interesting. And um, very good. That does change the high elf meta. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, that absolutely changes uh, an item that we have with orcs and goblins that lets us re-roll. So knobbly staff or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but high elves have this as a natural rule to re-roll their first failed, but now it's clarified because uh, technically, yeah. technically a miscast. Yeah, is a miscast failed? Uh, no, miscast is a miscast. That's fine. It's uh, if I think back to all my games that happened once where I got yeah. the re-roll out of it, but still, that's yeah. a that's a good change. It's a good change. It's happened once against me, and then they got the re-roll and got the spell. So yep. All right. Can a wizard with a physical attribute that counts as a type of armor, such as a treatment ancient's a boral armor, make a casting or dispel rules? One of these guys. Okay. Yes. Whilst such attributes are as protective as a suit of armor, such models do not wear armor. All right. Yeah. Okay. Why am I getting the dumb ones? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're getting the good ones. I'm reading all the time. <laughs> Movement. Uh, question. Can a unit that rallies and reforms during a rally fleeing unit subphase move during the movement phase? Yes. There you go. All right. Can a unit wilts... I'm getting all the wilts, too. Can a unit move wilts locked in combat? No. <laughs> what? what, what? Oh. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, Neil. Roll, 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 roll the next one. That's probably useful. All right. Here's a big one. Um, does a unit that uh, has to declare a charge due to being frenzied or impetuous have to do so if a friendly unit of skirmishers lies between it and a potential charge target, obstructing its movement? Answer. If there is a chance of the skirmishers moving so that they are no longer an obstruction, if they declare a charge, for example, yes. Otherwise, no. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So apparently you first have to move the skirmishers. Before, I guess. yeah, yeah. All right. I guess that's that's. Yep, that, that would make sense. Okay. All right. So that that changes how you how you manage your impetuous for sure. Uh huh. It it certainly does. All right. Oh, here's a long one. This would be fun. <laughs> I hope. I hope. If this is the long wall of text of of nonsense, I'll be laughing again. All right. Question. Although it cannot make a charge move, a unit in marching column can declare a charge. Why is this? There are several reasons. Firstly, a drilled unit that declares a charge whilst in marching column can freely, freely redress its ranks to adopt combat order after determining its charge range, but before moving, thus allowing it to make a charge move. Okay, so I'm not in a uh, correct thing. I'm in a marching column, but I can change before I actually make that move. Okay. Secondly, units that are obliged to declare a charge in certain circumstances, those with frenzied or impetuous, for example, must do so even while in a marching column. Oh, okay. So I bet there's some people maybe trying to negate frenzy or impetuous with a certain formation. If they cannot make the charge move, they don't move at all. The charge is failed. This prevents marching column being used to avoid declaring compulsory charges. Alternatively, there may be a psychological advantage to declaring a charge with a marching column, for example. The unit might cause terror, or the charge target might already be fleeing, of course. This isn't easy to set up in situations where such tactics can be used, and therein lies the challenge. Or, I just want to eat the stand and shoot, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's pretty cool. All right, it just clarifies that if you're a marching column, you can still charge, because you can still do shenanigans. Um, very clear. That does correct and and honestly that makes me go 
I've not been dealing with March of Column. Maybe I'm going to go take a look at it. Yeah. Interesting. And I'll yeah. have to kind of read how that works a little bit more, too. I've never used a marching column, so this is the first time I'm, I'm really looking at that. So Exactly. It makes me want to. I like that. That's All right. If a drilled unit in a marching column has to declare a charge due to being frenzied or impetuous, can it choose not to use drilled to redress the ranks and adopt combat order? Answer. If it is able to redress the ranks, i.e. if there is space for it to do so, no. A unit that is obliged to charge must endeavor to make use of any special rules it has in order to charge. The unit just really wants to charge, and it'll play this game without you if it has to. <laughs> that is wonderful. And like to me, too, it's also like, you know, you're always going to be charging. You're going to use your lance then. So I wonder, like, just think through this with me here. Say I have my dragon princess, all right, and say I take a a unit a, a a magic item on that character. Does this mean I will have to use my lance on turn one, on that first charge? Because that is a rule for charging. <laughs> I'm getting a little nitpicky yeah. here. Um, I doubt it. I'm not going to play it that way. I don't think anybody will. But I, it's it's a it's a funny FAQ. But like I could see how that might leave it open for some hmm. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 as much as I love the the snarkiness in here, absolutely love it. Yeah, this this is the first time where I've seen it where I'm like, hmm, this might cause more questions. Mm. Possibly, possibly, or I might be overthinking it. That's fine. We gotta clickbait these people somehow. Who are watching? Hope everyone's liking and subscribing and sharing this video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. not to get stuck on a tangent there with it. Um, question: If I want to charge an enemy unit that is a large target with a unit of mine that is in its front arc, for example, but cannot because the enemy unit is already engaged in the front arc, can I instead charge its flank? No, sometimes a charge isn't possible. Fine. I like that. Clean and simple. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. We are on to shooting. Yes, sir. Uh, question. Some chariots equipped with, a, uh, with large-scale missile weapons, such as bolt throwers, who shoots, who shoots such weapons... The crew, the beasts that draw the chariot, or the chariot itself? <laughs> Whew. Missile weapons mounted on chariots or howdahs are shot by the crew using their ballistic skill. I thought that was pretty obvious. But... That, that is, um, especially because I don't think the beasts have a ballistic skill ever. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. All right, anyway, okay. <laughs> on the combat, um, model in the fighting, or question, models in the fighting rank that are killed before they have a chance to fight cannot chance to fight cannot but can a model making a supporting attack if the model in front of it is slain yes if they have not been killed models able to make supporting attacks can do can do so as normal in other words casualties inflicted reduce firstly the number of models in the fighting rank that are able to fight and secondly the number of models in the supporting rank that are able to fight i think this is just clearing up and saying hey with the spears mm -hmm. you know how you get that you're not stepping up into the front rank with the supporting attacks. Yes, they uh -huh. still get the fight because you're not stepping up into the fighting ranks. So you're not stepping up into the chaos of slain combat of, of that melee blender. So the guys behind right. have the spears will poke through. So that's just clear. I think everybody was playing it that way, but it was a question. So good, good yep. one. Yep. All right. Question. How many attacks can a model with a split profile make if it is in the fighting rank, but not in base contact with the enemy? A model with a split profile consists of not one model, but several, all sharing the same base. Therefore, each model on that base could make a single attack. In the case of a cavalry model, for example, this would be one attack from the rider and one from their mount. I think that's going to be very important for that uh, new model we're getting from the dwarves. Shield bears? Yeah. Because, yeah, each one will get at least one attack. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, question. Can a close order unit of just one model claim the close order combat result bonus? Yes, provided that it has a unit strength of five or more, as per Reddit on page one. As mentioned previously, a close order unit, just one model, is still a close order unit. Okay, just hitting that at strength of five. And one. All right, and then we have a blue. What was blue again? Oh, updated. Um, updated. So we'll read the blue too. There's not. Okay. Challenges. Uh, challenge. 
challenges. <laughs> mm-hmm. If a wizard engaged in a challenge knows no, no, and no. uses wait, 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 wait. There's one up above. You're skipping ahead. Oh, is there? I skip yep. one? Ah, yeah. Um, this is under... Co- still, are we so, under shooting? So in combat. Oh, combat. Okay. Um, if any... If my unit loses a round of combat and either gives ground or falls back in good order, can it choose to use different weapons in the next turn if the enemy made a follow-up or pursuit move? No. Even though the unit separated momentarily, they remain locked in place and engaged in an ongoing combat once the follow-up uh, or pursuit move has been made. By other words, because the combat is ongoing, neither unit is able to swap one weapon for another. Okay, that's interesting because I think right now the way it worked before this, it was just the give ground that didn't count, but fall back in good order, you could swap. Interesting. And, and it says, so wait, even though they said they remain locked in place or engaged in an ongoing ca- combat, which means that even though you count as charging into somebody who's fallen back in good order, you can't use lances. You have to use your hand weapons. Hmm. Unless you so, use unless you use lance to round one, can you use it? We'd have to look at lances to see. If no, because once you're in combat, you can't use the lance. Oh. It's only on the charge, and then once after that initial charge, you're considered having to draw on your. Um, in every your following combat, you have to draw your hand weapon. Yeah, I'm I'm checking it out real quick. So also, that also affects elves, because if. They, we did the fallback in good order, and they charged in. It was a new new combat, per se. I got mm-hmm. plus one to my initiative again, um, which was pretty brutal, but that's fine. Lance. Um, Lance can only be used during a turn in which the wielder charged in subsequent turns, or if the wielder did not charge, the model must use its hand weapon instead. So since you count as charging, still, say, in a... This is, this is a question this, that, I, yeah. that needed to be answered, and I don't know that this answers it, you know, fully. Yeah, it's... Because hmm. it's, it's basically saying it's an ongoing combat. Yeah, it says it's an ongoing combat, but you count as charging, and it's a unit, it's a time in which you charged. And this is also saying, so you cannot change weapons. Hmm. You're not able to swap one weapon for another. I, I mean, to be honest, I think everyone's still going to play it that if you give ground, you're not using. But if you fall back in good order, you might because you, you'll get the chart. Well, yeah, we well, they're going to have to they're going to have to clarify that. Or I mean, I might look into the rules a little deeper and see if it's just like with this change, it unlocks and makes it more clear with the other rules that maybe I'm missing on charging and fallback because I'm not looking at the fallback in good order to give ground rules. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, that, that, because that's... It's, a, it's a question on uh, impact hits and everything, too. You know, if you're somebody falls back in good order more than three inches and you count as charging back in, do you get your impact hits again the second time? Uh, I'm going to look it up, fall back in good order real quick. So we know give ground doesn't for sure. Mm-hmm. Like that's, yeah. we're all pretty That's cool. only two inches. So you're, you're never going to get a impact hits anyway. Uh, do have to be three inches or more for impact hits. <laughs> hmm. Okay, the page I found doesn't really clarify it too much. It's the simple rules, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up later. We'll maybe we'll, we'll do a deeper dive on the podcast, just not to hold it up too much. But that's an interesting one. Yeah, I could change things up a bit. Okay, challenges. If a wizard engage question, if if a wizard engage in a challenge, knows and uses an assailment spell that can hit multiple enemy models, such as an assailment spell with a template, are multiple enemy models hit, or is it? participant in the challenge only blah blah, blah. when a sandwich spell is cast in a challenge it can only hit other participants in the challenge okay that's good i think it's just clarifying that like hey what about the template yeah. stuff yeah that's good to know yeah yep uh question if one pers- uh participant in a challenge causes impact hits or makes stop attacks where are they directed they are directed against the other participant in the challenge that works easy uh question if one participant in a challenge is killed can other models engage in the same combat, direct their attacks against the survivor during the combat phase in which it's their turn to fight? No. Even if one participant in the challenge has been slain, the challenge is considered ongoing to the end of the current combat phase. Easy. Mm-hmm. Simple simple things we know, but it's good to get clarified just for, for new people and just the wording. Mm-hmm. Um, question, does the Armor Bane oh, X we're, special... We're in Universal Special Rules now. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
So does the Armor Bane X special rule apply to spells cast by a model with the rule, such as assailment spells, magic missiles, or magical vortexes? No. I want to see the logic of how someone thought that could be it. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Question. Can a drilled unit redress the ranks before giving ground? Yes. Can can unit that gives ground is not a fleeing unit. Boom. Uh, note that it, it mentioned previously you should be part of a unit cross beyond the point of edge battlefield, giving ground, the entire unit's removed, blah, 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 blah. Be, be smart about it. But anyway, we'll try We'll try and go through these a little quicker here. Mm-hmm. All right. Do effects that modify a model's movement characteristic also model, modify how far a model with the fly X special rule can, can fly? Yes. If the model has a fly X special rule, the number given in brackets is essentially a second movement characteristic. Any effect that modifies one will modify both. That's good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Can a model with two versions of fly X special rule combine both and fly further? <laughs> no. A model with this that has more than one fly X special rule essentially has two movement characteristics and it can use when it's flying uh, of these you may use the best i was hoping that would be something like no if you see this it's a mistake (laughs) anyway if a unit with frenzy or impetuous has two movement characteristics for example if it can also fly does it have to use the greater when determining if it must declare a charge (laughs) if it is able to use the greater then yes it must tactically you might not want want it to but a frenzied lord of chaos on a mighty dragon doesn't care about your tactics (laughs) i love it (laughs) god i can see that that nonsense oh i'm just gonna use the two inch move instead i can't declare the charge now you jerk (laughs) come on come on question if a unit that is subject to frenzy becomes subject to frenzy again does it get plus two attacks no a unit is either frenzied or isn't multiple instances of frenzy are not cumulative darn i want to get super frenzy (laughs) <laughs> can a unit with a random movement special rule move around or past an enemy unit out of one arc into another before making contact with that unit? No. Whilst units that move randomly do not declare charges, if you wish to move into contact with an enemy unit, it must fulfill the same criteria as any other. Charging uh, charging unit during its movement, as detailed on page 126. Okay. Good to know. All right, question. How far does a unit with a random movement special rule move when giving ground? Two inches. Every unit. Easy. (sighs) Can two regeneration saves be combined together to improve the armor value? No, armor values given as a target number cannot be combined to lower the target number. As with ward saves, only a single regeneration save can be attempted, and different regeneration saves cannot be combined together. If a model has more than one regeneration save, simply use the best. Okay. Question, if a unit with a stupidity special rule fails its leadership test, how long is it stupid for? Unit tests for stupidity in each of the start of their turn subphases. Unless they are engaged in combat, by extension, a unit that fails the stupidity test remains stupid only until it passes a subsequent... subsequent... Ah, the next test. <laughs> Can't read today, sorry. Anyway. If a unit of skirmishers succumbs to stupidity, in which direction do they move? They should continue moving in the general direction they moved in the previous turn. If they did not move in the previous turn, towards the nearest enemy unit. I wish I wish this was just you roll the dice randomly. Scatter die? Yeah, I wish yeah. it was a scatter die. <laughs> but still, that's yeah. that's pretty interesting because yeah, you're you know, I, I could have seen this gone either way. So but at least we know towards an enemy or general direction you were going. Um, or just don't move, probably, it's what people do. Mm-hmm. All right, question. Swift Stride enables a model to move further during a charge move. What's its maximum possible charge range? Why is this? Oh. Yeah, okay. Because models with this special rule delight in running down cowards who flee before a charge. (laughs) Why can you do this? Because it's cool. Move on. All right. Characters up next. Characters. Question. A character mounted on a ridden monster or a chariot can choose to use their own or their mount's armor value, whichever is better. If the character wears magic armor, uh, but I choose to use the mount's armor value, can I still claim other benefits conferred by the magic armor? <laughs> no. You must use a magic item fully or not at all. Okay. Hey, no, that, that's a good one. You know, some people might have that question. Um, I suppose. Now, newer people. I'll give them benefit of the doubt. Right, question, if a character mounted on a ridden monster or chariot carries a shield, does that improve the mount's armor value? No. Shield is carried by the character, not the mount. What if I strap it to the mount? What if I model it? <laughs> what if I tape it to its forehead? <laughs> um, 
if a warband war character joins a unit that isn't warband, does that unit's rank bonus modify their leadership characteristic? No. I believe that means the majority have to have warband. All right. Uh, some magic weapons or special rules allow the following mod. Er, some magic weapons or special rules allow specific models within a unit to be targeted. Do such attacks ignore the lookout sir rule? No. So you still get that two up. Nice. All right, weapons of war up next. Do special rules conferred by the model's weapon apply to attacks made by that model's mount? No. Any rules conferred by a weapon, be it magical or mundane, apply only to attacks made by with that weapon. This can include, but is not limited to, rules unique to specific type of weapons, special rules that apply to a particular weapon, or special rules that apply to a magic weapon. For example, if a wizard is armed with a sword of swiftness, attacks made with that weapon are the strike spur special rule. But the wizard cannot claim that wielding the weapon allows them to cast a salmon spell at initial tent. To give another example, if a model has a special rule unique to its faction that grants additional rules to the hand weapon, the crew of an orc boar chariot have the chopper special rule, for example, that rule applies only to actual hand weapons carried by the riders or the chariot crew, not to weapons belonging to mounts who draft animals that count as. You just got real muddled there, but I think people know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're, so. you, 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 the more you, it's weird. The more you talk, the more your mic just gives up. Like in, oh, really? in, in a consistent. If you if you talk briefly, it it picks it up. The more you talk, it gets used to it. I think it's trying to make you ambient noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a new thing with this mic. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we'll slow it down a little bit. Yeah. All right. Question: Some monsters have weapons with notes that state they must make or may choose to make one attack or one additional attack with that weapon in combat. Can they make more than one attack with such weapons? No. It's noted that the weapon profile that a model may or must make a specific number of attacks with a weapon, a normal attacks otherwise, that's how the attacks it makes with that weapon. Whatever it says on the tin is what you do. Got it. All right. Uh, let's see here. We are at a uh, question. Can a model armed with two hand weapons choose to fight with just one hand weapon? Yes. As noted on page 213, unless stated otherwise... All models are assumed to be equipped with a hand weapon. A model with two has, by definition, two and may choose to fight with just one, foregoing the extra attacks plus one special rule in favor of some other benefit. So back to that witch elf question. Mm, maybe maybe they give you that choice for some reason, but we'll figure that out later. All right, question. When can a model use a lance? During any turn in which it's charged or counts as having charged. So there we go. You can use a lance in a fallback in good order. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Okay. Got it. We got there. there we go. Yep. All right. Can a missile weapon be used in combat? No. War Machine time. <laughs> Legolas disagrees. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> uh, War Machines. Can a cannon be shot in such a way as to hit the enemy unit that is engaged in combat with friendly with a friendly unit? No. Page 143 makes it clear that except in rare cases, the units cannot shoot enemy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yet. Yeah. Okay, you can't. <laughs> you All right. can a war machine shoot using the ballistic skill of a character that has joined it no because a war machine and its crew are treated as a single model you must have the crew's ballistic skill alright that's good to know um because I'm sure people are trying it with engineers mm -hmm. All right. warhammer armies if my opponent and I have agreed to play a 2,000 point game, but my army is not exactly 2,000 points, i.e. it's 1977, can I take two of something limited to 0 to 1 per 1,000 points? Oh my... Okay. Essentially, if I'm below 2,000, can I use the rule break to be below 2,000? Yeah. Yes, such limitations that's are based upon the size of your question. game. Decide on your yeah, game size, and that affects the rules even if you come in below it. That's all this uh -huh. is. All right. Question. Does an allied contingent have to abide by the restrictions given in the army composition list it is drawn from? Yes. An allied contingent is a small army within a large army made using a grand army or army of infamy composition list. Within a 2,000 points army, for example, an allied contingent of 500 points would have to spend at least 125 points on core units, could spend no more than 250 points on characters and would be unable to include any units limited uh, to 0 to 1 per 1,000 points. 
There we go. Clear, clear clarified. Um, most events probably still won't allow allies anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lord and Magic, as we finish up the last little bit here on the core FAQ. Let's see, Lures and Magic. If a unit upon which Earthen Ramparts has been cast is obliged to declare a charge, if the unit is Frenzy or Impetuous, for example, mustn't do so. If so, can it make the charge move? Are the ramparts, Earthen Ramparts does not prevent a unit from declaring a charge, prevents it from charging. In other words, yes, the unit must declare a charge if obliged to do so. However, because the unit cannot charge, does not move at all, and the charge has failed. So, that's good for your standing shooters, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, question, can a unit upon which Earthen uh, Ramparts has been cast make a countercharge reaction? No, a unit that countercharges counts as having charge. Therefore, a countercharge is a charge. Gotcha. Okay. A question, can the spell Spectral Doppelganger from the Lore of Illusion be used with a magic weapon that allows the wielder to make only a single attack? No, weapons limited to a single attack can only inflict a single hit. Uh -huh. And then you got the last one for this... This one. Yeah. All right. A uh, question. It's some magic, models magic be... items, by the way. We're magic items now. Yes. <clears throat> question. Some models can be found in one faction's army list, but can be included in any army made using a composition list belonging to a different faction. So, example, Dragon Ogre Shagos, for example, can be found in the Beastman Brayhards army list, but can be taken in an army made using the Warriors of Chaos Grand Army composition list. What lists of magic items do such models have access to? Models can purchase magic items from the list of common magic items in the Warhammer The Old World rulebook or from their own faction's list of magic items. A Dragon Ogre Shagoth, for example, can purchase items from the common or Beastman Brayherds magic item list. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, and let's take a quick glance. I, and I said, I have not seen these, so I don't think they're too big. Okay, these aren't too big for the uh, uh, other stuff. You're actually... Is there anything on these? The Ravening Hordes and Forces of Fantasy? Let's take a look. They're 1.0. Uh, might, they might be the uh, same ones. I don't see anything changed on it. I have the right version, I assume. Yeah. Didn't see anything there, yeah. I'm just going to open up the uh, browser here real quick. Make sure the dates... They have, an up there either. they have an update of today. Everything does. Let me just check, make sure I didn't download the wrong thing here. But uh, if it is, we will... Yeah, it's... Same one, so it looks like it's the uh, 1.0. Oh, because it's, it's new. They didn't have these before. That's why there's no magenta. Right, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, uh, I true. couldn't remember if they had these or not. I'm, I'm, my brain's not brain. All right, these, these are small pages, so we'll get through this pretty quick. Um... In, in respect to, to time, because we all have to go here. All right. Um, Forces of Fantasy. Uh, all right. A steam cannon. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just read the... F yeah, we'll just alternate again. Um, steam cannon. Add the following notes. Uh, weapon does not have a 360 line of sight arc. It can only shoot in the steam tank's front arc. That's good. All right. Laurels of Victory. Uh, page 76. When determining your combat result, each unsaved wound caused by attack made by the bearer on the laurels of victory, but not their mount, is worth two combat result points rather than the usual one. All right. And I said, and I don't know all these because I haven't played all these armies yet, so uh, sorry if we don't go in depth on all of these. Um, wizard staffs. Add the following to the wizard staffs. Zero to one per wizard. That's probably a good... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I've not used that item, but that's probably good. Have I put multiple um, Ed Button ats on a, on a single character? Yes, I have. <laughs> As long as you model it, it's fine. You're, yeah. <laughs> All right, Knight, Knightly Virtues. Change the second paragraph of Knightly Virtues as follows. To represent this, some models may be given a Knightly Virtue. A Virtue does not affect the model's mount, should it have one. Each Virtue may only be chosen once per army. Okay. Combat Result Bonus. Change the entry as follows. A, a, on page 110. A unit in Lance Formation, so we're Bretonians, uh... With a unit strength of five or more, may claim its plus one combat result bonus. Okay, so just clarifying because Lance Formation is weird. Got it. Elven Honors changed the second paragraph of Elven Honors as follows. To represent this, some characters may be given an Elven Honor. Each honor gives the character certain benefits in the form of unique equipment and additional special rules. An honor does not affect the model's mount, should it have one. Okay, that's seemed clear, but clear again. All right, Empire of Man. Are unsaved wounds caused by the mount of several, uh, of uh, blah, sorry, 
Our unsaved wounds caused by the mount of a model bearing the laurels of victory were two combat result points. No, only unsaved wounds caused by the bear, the rider count. Keeping it clear. Okay. All right. Kingdom of Bretonia. Can a Bretonian army pray for the blessing of the lady if it includes an allied contingent? Yes. Note, however, an allied contingent of Bretonians taken as part of any other army cannot pray. In order for Bretonians to pray, the army they are part of must have the blessings of the lady rule, which only Kingdom of Bretonia and armies have. All right. All right, question. How does a bolt thrower work when shooting a unit in lance formation? The models, the number of models hit is based upon the number of ranks overall. For example, a lance of six knights arranged in one, two, and three would suffer three hits. When a lance is shot by the flank for bolt thrower, the number of hits based upon this widest file. Continue the example above. Okay, so kind of what we were all thinking, but good to have it clarified. Um, if a character whose mount has a different size base to the models in a unit making up a lance formation wishes to join the unit, where should I place the model? The lands formation offers a bit more flexibility than other formations. For example, it is perfectly acceptable to place a character such as a duke or a baron at the front of the lance, should you wish. In the case of a handmaiden of the lady, the shield of the lady's special rule allows such models to be placed at the rear of such units. Alternatively, they can be placed within the unit. Um, if In this case, the extra base size will make very little difference to the shape of the unit. Okay, so put them wherever you want and Bretonians, guys, go nuts. Mm -hmm. All right, when a unit in lance formation engaged in combat, every model on the outside counts as being in base contact. How many enemy models count as being in base contact with the lance? Good question. The full fighting rank. When a lance charges, it pierces deep into the enemy formation, causing the enemy lines to close around it. It's very hard to show this on the table, though, hence the abstraction. And the note that this can be creating an area of dead ground between lance formation, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's good. Your whole front fighting rank, so... I like that a lot. That's that's a nice little... It's not giving Bretonians too much since they have that special rule. Got it. All right. Wood Elf Realms. The Hawkeyed Archer rule allows the Waystalker to target an enemy character it can draw a line of sight to and to target specific models within an enemy unit. Does this apply to magic items that allow them to cast magic missiles? Answer, no. The rule applies to their um, Ezrai Longbone. Uh, hot guide, uh, they may be, but that does not uh, mean they can snipe at enemy characters with powerful spells bound into magic items. We see you, Widow players. Calm down. <laughs> All right, question. Can a that, wood... Oops, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Okay. Can a wood elf realm's army place an additional wood using the woodland ambush rule if it includes an ally contingent? Yes. Note, however, that the ally contingent wood elves taken as part of other army cannot. So if you're allying wood elves with wood elves, looks like you can't. But what else allying with high elves cannot? Uh, the Bow of Lauren allows a wood elf character to make a number of shots equal to their attacks characteristic. How does this interact with enchanted arrows? Answer, when firing an enchanted arrow, it is assumed the model is firing only once, as is the norm. Therefore, one of the shots fired from the Bow of Lauren can be made using an enchanted arrow. The other shots are resolved using ordinary, i.e. not enchanted arrows. That... It's stupid. Yeah. I was going to say that outright. <laughs> I don't really like that either. That seems like complication for complication. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. But, Just, okay. They have enchanted yeah. arrows. They're not bringing two sets of arrows. They're not Hawkeye here. Oh, boy. I like yeah. it. Um, yeah. Anyway, High Elf Realms. Can a wizard with the Warden of Safri Elven Honor purchase magic armor? No, because you're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Anyway, Ravening Hordes, and we'll finish up this show here. Uh, Neil, you want to start us off with the gigantic sure. spider? Add move. So this is gigantic spider. Add move through cover to gigantic spider's list of special rules. Makes sense. I think that was just missed when it was added in there. Cause it's a spider. Mm -hmm. All right. Chaos steed, page fifty nine. Add counter charge the chaos steeds list of special rules. Oh, that suddenly makes those terrible knights wow. a little bit better. I think. Heck yeah. I like it. Okay. All right. Page 76. Hell Cannon. Change the base size entry to as follows. Base size is 100 by 150 millimeters for the Hell Cannon and 25 by 25 for the Chaos Dwarf Hammer. That's right. Rebase them, everybody. Rebase them right now. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gifts of Chaos. Page 77. Change the second paragraph of Gifts of Chaos as follows. Re represent these strange attributes. Some characters may be given Gifts of Chaos. A gift does not affect the character's mount, should they have one. Each gift may only be chosen once per army. Got it. All right. 
Um, change the rule to on Slaughter's Call. If this model becomes frenzied as a result of the Blood Rage special rule, any unit it has joined will also become frenzied. Okay. Chaos Mutations. Change the second paragraph of Chaos Mutations as follows. To represent these strange attributes... Okay, the mount doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just... yeah. Fair enough. Frequently... Fr frequently no, 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 no. What? We have the Arcane Journal Orc and Goblin Tribes. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Badlands Ogre Bulls. Under options, change the cost of upgrading one model to a Crusher Champion to plus seven points. Boom. First point change. The first nope. domino has fallen today, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> With a book I, I don't even have in my hands because it hasn't arrived yet. Mm -hmm. All right, FAQ time. Orc and Goblin Traps. If a unit of Night Goblins that is engaged in combat still contains an unreleased Fanatics, can they release whilst the unit is engaged? Provided they can be placed within three inches of their concealing unit and not touching the base of any other models, yes. Fuck. Oof, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that too. I That's... absolutely hate that. Your That's, fanatics are so good. It's it's crazy. You don't need to make them better. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, there has to be some counterplay against them. Goodness. All right. If a fanatic moves into contact with a unit that's engaged in combat, does it hit the unit or units that the unit is engaged with as well? When a fanatic moves into contact with another unit, it continues in a straight line until it can be placed back on the battlefield. Any units that passes through are hit. Units um, the line does not pass through are not hit. Again, so I use this again in my game against Luke, and I popped out three fanatics. His um, out of a, a unit of uh, night goblins that was to the right of a combat with that was happening with a giant and sword masters. And what I did was I just sent all three of them in a line right through his sword masters. Mm -hmm. And I, as I was doing, it, I was like, man. This is terrible. I hate that I'm doing this to this person right now. I can't believe this is actually hitting me as well. Um, and that's just how we played it. Right. Now, there was a fence next to them, and all the fanatics died after they got through the, the unit. But that's sure. fine. I didn't care. They did what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Yikes. Man. Yeah. All right. Fanatics still scary. All right. Uh, all, right. all goblins fear elves. If you know elves causes fear, does it lead them to cause terror to goblins? No. Okay. All right. Warriors of Chaos. If a if a character with the mark of Nurgle, for example, is mounted on a chariot with the mark of Chaos Undivided, does the chariot benefit from the character's mark, or do I have to pay the points to give the chariot the mark of Nurgle for it to gain the same benefits? If you want a chariot mount to have the same benefits from a mark of Chaos that it ride that its rider has, you have to pay the points to give the chariot the mark of Chaos. Sorry, bud. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, Beastman Brayherds, also the only place you can play Beastman in a year's time. All right, can the Hag Tree Fetish be used to reroll wounds to wounds caused by a bound spell? No. I'm not reading the rest. Just no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tomb Kings of Kemri, can a Necro Sphinx make more than one attack each turn with its decapitating strike? No. The decapitating strike profile must be used, as noted, to make one additional attack. Okay. And Tomb Kings of Kemri, Arcane Journal. So we are getting Arcane Journal updates. It's just mixed in with the general armies all right the crew of a tomb guard chariots are equipped with shields does this improve the armor value of the model from a four to three no chariots given armor yeah we've, that was clarified elsewhere so yeah that's just how it is all right all right that covers all of that so i'm bringing us back up here to wrap up the show uh later today i will look at the other ones this is any like at least the dark elf one i didn't read the other ones <laughs> so uh and I'll, I'll bring it up on the uh Th uh, Thursday podcast or Friday podcast as it comes out. So, uh, hope everybody enjoyed this quick little uh, hour show to go through the FAQs. I thought it'd take a half hour, it took a longer. Sorry about that, Neil. Um, yeah, no worries. But yeah, uh, everybody out there, go get some more old world games in. And like I said, I'll try and find the FAQ email in case you have further questions that you can uh, provide. So, check the links below. And as usual, everybody, uh, like, subscribe, stay Stormcast strong, and happy hobbying.